Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we're going to be having some fun with uh, the old PL1 compiler, the PL1F compiler. Uh, it's a compiler that was, I think, uh, released by IBM in the mid 60s and continued to be developed until probably the very early 70s. Uh, it's also called the MVT compiler often, uh, the MVT being the OS 360 version of the operating system that had uh, multiple variable tasks support um, and also some early uh, form of, uh, of uh, 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 virtual memory. And uh, the PL1F compiler is the only compiler we have in uh, our MVS 3.8 TK4 distribution. And so uh, I use it extensively and some other folks use it very extensively. Uh, and the opinion is out there that it's a it's an outdated compiler, which uh, of course it is, and uh, and that it is a, uh, a very old compiler. And, and with that also sometimes for a lot of people goes the opinion that it's an outdated compiler, uh, that it's an in incapable compiler, which is uh, not true. And we'll see today how capable this compiler is and some of the things that you can do with this compiler so that we can dispel the notion that just because it's old, uh, it's not useful. And so spe specifically today, we're gonna to be looking at multitasking in, in, uh, with this PL1F compiler. Uh, multitasking to a lot of people seems to be something that was recently invented, uh, that's something or maybe something that came with Windows. Uh, not true at all. Multitasking was already done uh, very extensively in the 60s and uh, OS 360, the OS 360, sorry, <laughs> the precursor of uh, of ZOS, OS 390, MVS, uh, ESA, MVS XA, MVS 3.8, uh, and and of course then MVT and MFT was designed from the get-go to be a multitasking compiler, and so multitasking was a bit was available from the very beginning, um, which is not the same as multiprocessing. Obviously, multiprocessing, multitasking is not quite the same thing. Multiprocessing means being able to deal with more than one CPU, or what we call today also uh, with more than one core. Uh, back in those days, having more than one CPU was rare, uh, but pretty soon after after IBM released the 360 series with the 370, they started to have a support for more than one CPU. Sometimes it would actually run two operating systems on inside the same computer with two CPUs, and then later on, they uh, were able to run one operating system image with uh, more than one CPU. Um, and so IBM kind of coined the term uh, loosely coupled or tightly coupled. Uh, tightly coupled means having two more than one processor inside the same frame, inside the same computer. A loosely coupled would be a network of uh, of computers with multiple processors. And of course, JS3 uh, is the best example of an operating system support uh, for um, loosely coupled computers. Uh, and I have a video about JS3 and I will link uh, to that video in the description below this video you're watching right now. So let's go and experiment a little bit with uh, PL1 multitasking. I have here my TS, uh, um, I have my MBS 3.8 running. It is complaining about some uh, some disk here having a problem, unknown space. Um, we'll find out if uh, this system works. I suspect it will work just fine. Um, so uh, let's log in here as Herc01. is not working oh actually looks like indeed there is something uh, okay so we are in and this is um, a TK4 update 7 I would think this is not the latest I have on this uh, particular computer but we can make things work here so let's go see how we get uh, this multitasking program into the system. I have, um, before we go there, let's decide where we're gonna put it. So, so 
sorry I'm, I just got a new keyboard and I'm getting used to it um, so what is this some assemble program I was working on I was forcing events um, yeah not really that important so we're going to put it in her um, 01 test CNTL okay so let's get out of here and I want to transfer send to host I'm gonna uh, do Desk so multitasking. There it is, and we're going to put it into her zero one test. You can also run it from the card reader directly on the TK four here, but um, I prefer to use the uh, editor inside, and then we also don't have to fiddle with password, etc. Uh, because as you know, if you submit a job from the card reader, you have to provide a user ID and password for TSO. Uh, so we're going to call it pl one mol. okay so text and tso and done let's go back in and here it is so um this is a program that was supplied by one of the uh, community members uh, marcus low i think in france uh, very very nice fellow who's uh, a peel one expert and uh, he gave me this program to test uh, it's a program which demonstrates multitasking application for users test the quality of dices simultaneously the quality of dices I don't know if that's what he means he probably doesn't mean the quality of dices but the probably the attributes of uh, dices or of chance I would think um, anyway but um, this is from October last year and very nice uh, boilerplate here and let's look at this program so um, it's called test procedure options main declares um, task so this is the way to declare a task in PL1 and then has events um, so that the tasks uh, can be controlled and then so put start call user one with task one and event one that's the way to start it and then uh, he calls all the other ones and then he waits for events all those four events and let's see um, what happens with those events so this is user one uh, started as task one so this is just a procedure but since we declare it to be a task it will be started independently let's see how many CPUs we have on the system two CPUs so there should always be uh, at least two executing at the same time, which is not the same thing as running. So tasks are all running, but they, name, they not, may not all be scheduled on the processor at the same time. But this machine has um, two CPUs and this system has, if I'm not mistaken, four CPUs. What is it? Um, it's an i4770. It's a quite a fast machine, 3.4 gigahertz. I buy these machines. It's an older i7. It's about three years old. Uh, maybe even four years old, but it runs at 3.4 gigahertz, which is perfect for Hercules work. Um, it will run things very fast, and it has four cores, eight logical processes with hyperthreading turned on. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so it then uh, runs a, a procedure called dice test, and let's see what happens. Okay, that's the procedure that's being run. Let's just throw some dices. And and then there's probably a random, yeah. And that's a re-entrant, so it can be called uh, several times. And um, I wanted to see where the events are being handled. Yeah, I, the event in this case is just it's just the termination of the procedure. This wait here is actually just waiting for the procedure to end. So um, there's no special. You could do much more with events there, and of course you can also have inter-task communication. Um, so let's see here what it does. Okay, these characters are just look like this on this terminal. They, if I turn in hex, you'll see the real. It's just the uh, code page being used by the 
EPCDIC to ASCII conversion. Okay, so I would just say let's give this a run and see what happens. Uh, I'll delete this line here, which we don't need. Okay. So let's give this a, a run. Uh, we don't need the password in this instance. Let's run it and then you can you can check the processor here and let's see what happens. So uh, not much happened. It's maybe too fast. Let's go 3.8. Um, something went wrong. Sys out substitution JCL. I don't know what it is that went wrong here. Um, let's look at the JCL. Yeah, I think this is what confused it. Um, let's remove the. Oh, yes, I, am, I see the problem now. This comma here throws it off. And as you see here, he has a very nice practice to always put a time limit so that if you have a, a, if you have a loop, um, you, it will terminate by itself and you don't uh, render the machine close to useless um, or not responsive. So let's try this again. Okay. And swap again. And this time it ran. Condition code zero. Good job, Marcus. So let's see what happened here. So um, just as a reminder, this is a compiler from um, this is the version 5.5, one of the very latest versions of this compiler, the, comp the F compiler. IBM had the F compiler because they wanted to, to fit in 64 kilobytes of core memory or RAM. And then they had, in Germany um, at Bobling and IBM also produced a, a D version of the compiler, which would fit in 16 kilobytes of memory, and that's including the operating system. It's just amazing. So uh, we don't we don't really know. They had a full compiler that could do multitasking in the 60s in 64 kilobytes, and I believe the D compiler was also able to do uh, multitasking, but it didn't have events handling. If I um, like on uh, events like on on division by zero, those kind of events. So let's see what it produced here. So the output. Very nice. Uh, I love the, the output produced by this compiler. It has this nesting level. Uh, the F compiler had over a hundred passes. So when it when it compiles a program, there's over a hundred times that it actually goes over the source code to produce the output. Um, and it's a it's a multi-phase compiler, which means it loads phases into, in and out. So the compiler sometimes, because it tries to fit inside 64 kilobytes, it swaps in and out certain components um, of the compiler as needed. Highly complex, but they made it fit in 64 uh, kilobytes. And again, um, PL1 is a, is a language designed by IBM. Um, out of all places, uh, it started with a language uh, committee meeting in Vienna. And so Vienna, Austria was always a special place for PL1. And if you go to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, you see a lot of PL1 usage that, and in the US it was always more co COBOL um, and assembler and RPG, but the German speaking countries always had more PL1 usage. So I'm not at all surprised that this submission for this, um, for this uh, job came out of Europe. So you see here, um, the program ran test user and so these are the, f the five tasks running at the same time and they're producing output uh, at different levels. I don't know what it is exactly that he's showing us here um, but um, and then this came in later so let's experiment with the program a little bit and see what we can learn by changing its behavior. Uh, test start for users, oh, it's four users Okay, so let's make it easy and let's start with three users so that we can have a better 
make them feel a little easier. Or even two. Put skip and wait for one and three. And so let's copy this line. Very nice. This is a copyright by Edlis. Um, I made a video about installing and using the basic 360 uh, basic compiler written in, in PL1 uh, uh, a couple of months ago, and you can find it in the in the older videos. And that basic 360 compiler is actually written in PL1 by this uh, Edlis. And by the way, he has since updated Basics 360 a little bit and uh, solved some of the shortcomings that I had seen, such as not having F if then you could only put in a line number, not actually handling of the condition. And I think he fixed some of that, maybe not all of it. But P uh, at least must be a PL1 expert because he wrote the whole compiler in, in PL1. Um, so let's see what happens here. Let's just run it and switch again. Okay, this also went through fine. Mm. I'm actually not convinced we're looking at the right output. So let's go here and see which job it is, 359. Ah, uh, yeah, this one, 359. Yeah, so this is the one that only executed uh, user 1 and user 3, and as you see here, user 2 and user 4 did not execute. Um, but I still don't quite understand what it is we're looking at here I need to study the source code. So it's calling dice test, and let's look at the those characters are kind of bothering me here, these characters. If I, oh yes. As you can see here, this is the error. So let's put it right in here. Okay. And then this. And then it should become more readable. So this is actually very good because we saw some of the errors that are introduced sometimes when you upload ASCII into an EBCDIC environment. There will always be issues like this, and um, and um, you need to uh, check for this when you have special characters. Some some of the stuff that's slightly outside the EBCDIC range will start to behave, and you could fix this by changing the code page. Um, let's see here. You should have. A code page setting here. Where is it? Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, code page. Um, 437 is usually uh, covers more of the stuff that we do. So I think if you had used 437, this wouldn't have happened. But I can't be sure. Um, so try that for next time but um, so let's go change the code again and allow now for four uh, users again Oops. so let's go up and this time we should have better output so and then with this one and let's run it again let's see what happens this time okay three 
360. It actually takes a little while to execute. I don't know if you noticed that, but this time it was a little slow. Um, even though we have all these errors, things still work just fine. Which kind of also tells you a little bit about the resilience of uh, MBS. It has a problem with this um, 248, uh, which I think is distribution libraries. So we don't really need that for running, but things keep on running. So uh, let's go to the very bottom. Yeah. Okay, so now we see much better going on here so this is user 2 so these were all running within the same time within about 600 milliseconds from each other 770 and then this ran both at the same time and uh, let's see what the zero means. So, translate A, B, C, D. Okay, so those are dices. Okay, I understand now. Um, yeah, this is dice um, faces. So if we run it again, we should have a different output. Let's check, check. As you can see here, it runs. Yeah, it actually does take quite a bit to end. And it just ended now. So it ran about six, seven seconds. Let's find, uh, so we have here one, one, two, one, two, three. So let's go check if you have different output. Yes. Yeah. So this is just uh, random uh, dice throws, and uh, obviously the randomness of uh, the random function in PL1 here it's, uh, is highly suspicious. I would think that um, the the cryptical, how to say, the this, the safety of the random function is, is probably very weak in, in, in MVS 3.8. Uh, obviously, IBM has made huge progress and is probably the leading computer company when it comes to cryptology and uh, the random function nowadays on uh, real uh, Z hardware is uh, very, very high. And uh, But this is probably not to be used for real, safe, uh, secure workload. But as we can see here, these are also all running uh, very nicely. Um, task running in parallel and so the possibilities on things you can do with multitasking in this uh, very old compiler are almost endless um, especially if you want to explore task to task communication shared objects etc it's all in there let me see what else I have this I haven't run this TK4 image in a while um, so and Queens in Fortran hmm. I don't know Let's run it. Task 362. Oh, this is very interesting. I've forgotten about this Fortran version of my favorite. Uh, um, where is Oh, it went to the printer. Sorry. Let's put it into H. Of my favorite uh, problem to use when programming, which is the n times n Queens problem. Um, so let's switch. And let's see, it has nothing to do with PL1, but since we're here, why not? Um, no output. <laughs> Condition code zero. I don't remember what I did here. Upper limit of taste range. It was uh, for 10, high 12. Don't really know what's going on. Um, 
let's look at it with the with the um, with using an ICER output her print. I have uh, Fish's amazing printing utility. Um, so let's configure the printer to be um, a network printer. Device init 00e localhost. Sock dev socket device. Okay, so now we go here to localhost and we say um, hmm. where are my control files? No control files. I guess we'll have to forget about that, but um, I don't remember what this did. I will look at it, maybe make a separate video about it. And let me just check this out. Um, Queens in Algol. Wow, I even have it in Algol. Crazy. Um, let's give this a spin. Who would have thought? I remember I wanted to make a video about this, about all the different versions of the same problem. This is probably what I worked on. Yeah, lots of problems here. This wouldn't, I think this some more work clearly in, uh, in this program. But, um, So um, anyway, we did uh, look at uh, the true multitasking capability of this printer. By the way, uh, very interesting that you can also specify here um, options on a per process level. Don't forget that Pure one is able to do that. You don't have to put it just generally for everything. Uh, so that's it. Um, I will make this program, I will link to this program, even though it's uh, copyright, well, it's GPL. So I will, I, will, uh, I will make it available in my GitHub repository. So in the end, I will link to it in the description below this video so you can play with it. It's a very interesting little, um, little uh, program to test the capability of this amazing PL1F compiler we have. And by the way, this will work exactly the same on a ZOS system. I have access to a real, um, COS system uh, 2.1 on a real mainframe out in Germany on the, at the University of Leipzig thanks to uh, one uh, special person Sebastian and uh, in the next video I'll start using that mainframe just uh, maybe look a little bit at uh, uh, how uh, ZOS 2.1 has changed from uh, some of the older versions that we've played with in the previous videos. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I do invite you to uh, uh, join our Discord channel and uh, chat with the experts there or uh, look for interesting subjects in our uh, Facebook Moshik's uh, mainframe channel page. And please do subscribe to the mainframe channel uh, to get notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button and see you soon.